Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen Squadron 42 monthly report, taking a look at the February updates and summarising them down. A lot of the info in the Squadron 42 report was repeated in the Persistent Universe one, so I will omit that information, seeing I've already done a big video on the Persistent Universe report, and I'll link it down below instead so you can watch that at your leisure. So what's new in the world of Squadron 42's development? Squadron 42 feature teams helped designers fix problems with moving missions over to work with object container streaming, and went through the requirements of mission fail conditions. They also continued to develop a firing range and get it working in-game. The gameplay story teams completed a mocap session before the end of 2020, and they kicked this year off by moving the captures through the pipeline. They also finished a handful of polished tasks remaining on the Morrow Tour, which will feature uh, as a sort of main um, unifying scenic in the game. Alongside this, they've begun updating and maintaining their scenes from Chapter 4A, which is a wider development focus of Q1 2021, and there's a lot of work that went into uh, that part of the chapter um, throughout the report. However, progress was also made on other game sections, including the first chapter. The level design team are currently working through all the ground-based FPS environments, adding additional setups for various player paths, the space and dogfight team worked alongside AI to bring an enemy faction's combat behavior to the gold standard. VFX worked closely with art and design to flesh out their interior cells of the coil, with VFX tech art taking an active role in moving the locations forward. The UI programmers began the groundwork for an improved star map, interior map, and radar. Now, this was actually mentioned in the Persistent Universe Month report, but it is so important that I wanted to mention it again. This is a significant project that will take several months to complete, but will greatly help with navigation around the game world. If you want to be able to see where you're going, you want to see little mini-maps, you want to have a better star map, this, this, is, this is what we want. Uh, they've been updating the UI for the Gladius and Aegis manufacturer and have also created an updated UI for RSI ships uh, that will feature in several ships in the campaign. Following on from some successful chapter milestones in December, the cinematics team are now pushing various milestones in 2021, polishing further chapters to production quality. When the team created the pipeline for this and further milestones, they divided the production phases into separate uh, little phases. So let's talk about those very briefly. Previs, performance capture and other elements like cameras and FX are added in a very crude form. No editing is done, then basic mocap edits from the video editor. Kick off a basic pass where all scene members are loosely aligned, though heavy misalignment is corrected. The state machine is also looked at, so a basic breakup of animation fragments is undertaken. Implementation. Full alignment is done, all animation fragments are created, mostly to a correct length, and basic pose matching is completed. Look IK is enabled. That moves to production. All animation elements are polished to a high standard, all pose matching is complete, and a look IK polish is done based on what the actor was going for and where they were looking. Finalization, the final pass before shipping. This includes ensuring fingers are animated correctly and a minor detail polish. So the new milestones contain both scenes in space and scenes inside space stations, with both of them differing in needs and requirements. For example, a scene in space typically begins as a timeline sequence of comm calls between NPCs. Some were planned to just be comms calls, but were updated and upgraded to full cinematic cutaways over time. In these scenes, the players will be able to experience the action in first person using the break free feature should they want to. Once the calls are complete, the team lay down the action elements. This allows them to space out the comms as needed and begin crucial nav spline work. Control points, ship speed, spline tangents, roll, pitch, and yaw, they all need to be dialed in carefully. For example, the splines could start with the player approaching several mercs to scan them and while laying this out the team pays significant attention to direction color and the intensity of the sun or where it will be in the final mission layout as the wrong angle could mean the whole scene is flatlit and less interesting another consideration is how costumes ship loadouts and cockpits could change as some aren't finished or feature mesh work being worked on later in the milestone 
uh, balance needs to be struck in terms of what designers want to do and what they can do on a first pass, as the spline skeleton needs to be dialed in first. Realistic pathing is vital here, particularly as the scene will be viewable from either first or third person and from a variety of angles. The current milestone features a scene around a table at a noodle bar, which has challenges very different from animating kilometer long nav splines. For example, a character eating noodles with chopsticks means the the team have to animate fingers, sticks, a box, and noodles, and possibly film themselves eating on their lunch break for reference. The scene's state machine must be considered too, with animation idols and fragments in mind. They must also cater for players arriving at varying times due to potential side activities on the way to the scene. Something for your xenophiles that you might find really interesting and exciting here, the character teams are working on Xi'an character bodies and facial rigs, and are currently exploring the alien species language, uh, body movement and joint placements. Skinning tests are also underway to ensure the best foundation possible for the animation rigs, so they have been pushing forward with Xi'an uh, over the last month. Time was also devoted to vandal combat behaviours, animation implementation and head rigging for upcoming cinematics. This tied into rigging work currently underway for creatures found in the Persistent Universe as well. They have progressed with work for mess halls sitting and eating, character wild lines, formal rail leaning. I'm not sure how you'd have formal rail leaning over informal rail leaning. Um, vending machine blocking, wall panel maintenance, the vendor for weapons and guard animation sets to combine them with patrolling. So for combat AI, focus was on final motion capture implementation and blockouts for the Vandal pinning the player character down. Um, that will be pr interesting. I suppose that maybe there's stun animations or maybe it's um, part of a death animation or something. There has been some focus on Rebecca Trejo's character with the team polishing her head, creating hair and developing a new outfit. Old Man has received polish as well, which predominantly involved adding the new eye assembly. Revisions to the Xi'an were also made and passed on to the tech animation team for rigging. A few minor characters have also received new assets and polish passes. And that's it for the Squadron 42 updates, this time for February. Please check out my video on the summary of the Persistent Universe monthly report as well for more information as this is sort of like a sister video or that's a sister video to this. But what do you think? When will we start to see more of the Xi'an? I'm actually very much looking forward to seeing those little turtle boys. It sounds like they are going to be a big feature in Squadron 42 or at least feature there somewhat. How do you think the progress of Squadron 42 is coming along? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway and February is no different. This month is for a Merc Star Runner. It's a multi-role ship, but also a solid data and cargo runner and flyable now in game. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during a month. Details below. I'm also a massive shill for NordVPN. If you are looking for a VPN service, and you should, then NordVPN acts as a fleet of ships protecting your data from prying eyes while also providing privacy like a ship would. Enjoy the interwebs without borders, securely and safely. Use the links below for discount. I can't promise it will make your life better, but I can imply that. Also, there is Game Glass. Do you have a touchscreen device that you want to use as a diegetic controller or interactive panel for Star Citizen and other games? Check out Game Glass. It's free for life for the basic version, and you can buy additional shards or functionality and, or subscribe for more as well. A special thank you for everyone that goes the extra mile to become a channel member or Patreon, as well as just liking, subscribing, or sharing these videos. If you would like to further support the channel, then please consider using the YouTube join button below my videos and becoming a board gamer channel member. You'll get some exclusive content each month, as well as badges that appear in the comments section of videos and emotes that you can use and all that sort of jazz. Thank you so much for checking out my content. You take care, and I hope to see you in the verse.